Mr. Chief Justice. The Senator from Illinois. I send a question to the desk for the House managers. Thank you. The question from Senator Duckworth for the House managers. If the hold on aid to Ukraine was meant to be kept secret until the President could gather internal U.S. government information on Ukraine corruption and European cost sharing, then is there any documentary evidence of this? For example, is there any evidence that the President was briefed on those issues by the NSC, DOD, or State Department during the period of the hold in the summer of 2019, or any evidence that he requested specific information on anti-corruption reform measures in Ukraine. Prior to releasing the aid on September 11, 2019, did the President order any changes to administration policy to address corruption in Ukraine or burden sharing with our European allies? Chief Justice, uh, thank you, uh, Senator, for that question. Let's just take a, a moment and um, address what the process should have looked like. Uh, because you know, as we've already established and as President's Council has conceded and we've conceded is this does happen. Right? There is a legitimate policy process for review and for determination on hold because there is indeed legitimate policy reasons to hold aid. Uh, and we've never said that corruption is not one of those, or burden sharing wouldn't be one of those. What we're saying is, is there's no evidence that in what we are talking about today that the president was concerned or engaged that process. So what would normally happen is Congress would come together, as we did. We passed appropriations bills, and we made a determination that funding was appropriate for the aid which 87 members of the Senate did uh, this past year. The President would then rely on the advice of government experts from the National Security Council, the Department of Defense, the State Department, and the Office of Management and Budget regarding that aid. That's the, the, the interagency process that we've talked so much about, the interagency process that we went through earlier last year and at the conclusion of that interagency process, it was determined that it had met all of the conditions for the aid, and all the agencies determined that it should go forward. The president would then seek permission from Congress that he intended to, uh, would normally, if there was a reason, the president would go back and seek permission from Congress to hold the aid. So let me repeat that. If there were a reason to hold it, the president and President Trump has done this in the past under legitimate processes, as has President Obama and prior presidents, would go back to Congress under pre-described uh, processes and make sure that they're not violating the Empowerment Control Act and seek permission to hold it. That did not happen. Congress would then weigh in on the request by either approving or denying the president's request. And then unless Congress specifically approves the president's request, the aid must be made available. Of course, none of that happened. In this instance, a hold was put in place. We don't know exactly when because the president and his agencies have prevented us and his counsel have prevented us from getting that information, but a hold was put in place. No reason was given. And in fact, the only one within the United States government who apparently knows why that hold was put into place is president's counsel, who tried to tell us last night why he thinks the hold was put into place, but nobody else knows. So yes, the answer is, if there was a legitimate policy process put in place, there will be a lot of information about burden sharing, about corruption, about any of the other concerns to which we have no evidence. And if burden sharing, to the last point of, of the question, was a concern, then the person who should have been asked to discuss those concerns with the EU and our European partners would have been Ambassador Sondland, because he is the United States Ambassador to the European Union. 
And not once did President Trump go to Ambassador Sondland and say, discuss these issues with the EU and the Europeans saying they need to provide more money. Not once did that happen. And it didn't happen because it wasn't the real concern. All of the evidence shows the President withheld taxpayer money, foreign aid to our partner at war to coerce them to start a political investigation to benefit his 2020 election campaign. That is what the evidence shows, and that's why we are still here. And there is one person that can provide additional information on that, and that is Ambassador Bolton. And yes, it is still a good time to subpoena Ambassador Bolton. Thank you, Mr. Manager.